Tonight, more details on Amazon's secretive 3D phone. Facebook slings mud at Snapchat. And YouTube is making indie artists psh, disappear. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 110 for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox, where you can order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like cherry vanilla granola, anybody? To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Amazon is widely expected to announce its first smartphone tomorrow at an event in Seattle, Washington. And reports are pointing to a three-dimensional display that can respond to users' eye movements and gestures. As was rumored in the past, the Wall Street Journal is now reporting that Amazon will launch with AT&T as the exclusive carrier. This is according to people familiar with the company's plans. AT&T already provides wireless service for Kindle tablets and e-readers, so there's a partnership there already. Amazon's challenge will be to not only attract new customers from other wireless contracts, some multi-year, but also mobile developers. The phone is likely to use a version of the Android mobile operating system that does not have access to Google's own Play Store, like what Amazon's Kindles use. Now, meanwhile, Bloomberg reports that the not-yet-released Amazon phone, and it hasn't been released yet, has been in development at Lab 126, that's Amazon's secretive hardware division based in Silicon Valley, since way back in 2009, citing conversations with multiple Lab 126 employees. Now, more than 1,600 people claim Lab 126 as their employer on LinkedIn. The actual number might be a lot higher than that. Amazon released its Fire TV set-top box back in April. The wand-type Amazon Dash, that lets users of its Amazon Fresh Grocery Service scan barcodes of items to add to online shopping lists. So a phone would make for a pretty productive year for Lab 126 since CEO Jeff Bezos established the group back in 2004. Again, that, uh, that, that phone is expected to be yeah, unveiled tomorrow. Independent record labels that have refused to agree to YouTube's license terms will begin disappearing from YouTube in advance of the launch of a new music streaming service on the video sharing site, which is rumored to be called YouTube Music Pass and said to launch this summer. According to the Worldwide Independent Network, or WIN, which represents indie labels, they haven't been offered the same deal that was negotiated with the three major labels, that's Sony, Warner, and Universal. The terms offered to WIN, says WIN, undercut existing rates from Spotify and RDO and others. Speaking to the Financial Times, Robert Kinkle, the company's head of content and business operations over at YouTube, says that videos from independent artists could be blocked in a number of days if these labels don't sign. Some content will still be available via channels like Vivo, but exclusive content and live performances will be pulled. A proposal from Democratic lawmakers introduced today would force the Federal Communications Commission to ban fast lanes on the Internet by requiring the FCC to use its authority to make sure Internet providers don't speed up certain types of content, such as Netflix videos, at the expense of other data. The bill is known as the Online Competition and Consumer Choice Act and would give the FCC crucial political cover to prohibit the paying of extra fees to ISPs to receive what's known as paid priority prioritization or what it's become known as internet fast lanes. Although how far it will get in the Republican controlled house is a whole other issue. Some consumer advocates suggest that instead the FCC should reclassify broadband as utility. That's a decision that would subject ISPs to more regulation. Broadband companies said that even that wouldn't guarantee prioritization's ban survival though, because of a loophole in a law that allows for some traffic discrimination as long as it isn't unreasonable. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler has said that he's reserving the reclassification option in case the existing plan fails to protect consumers. 
Apple has reached a settlement with U.S. states and consumers. A lot of consumer stuff today. Seeking damages over the company's fixing of electronic book prices, which allows Apple to avoid a trial where it faced up to $840 million in claims. The trial had been set for July and involved cases relating to a ruling last year that the company made an illegal agreement with publishers to raise ebook prices. The U.S. government sued Apple and five of those publishers in April of 2012, claiming that Apple pushed them to sign agreements, letting it sell digital copies of their books under a pricing model that made a lot of ebooks more expensive and then, of course, gave Apple its 30% share. Terms of the settlement were, unsurprisingly, not disclosed. Coming up, we've got some Microsoft Surface price drops. Are you excited? It might not be the service that you want, but up next, we're also going to talk to the Wall Street Journal's Reed Albert Gotti. He's joining us to talk about Facebook's newest effort, the slingshot. But first, let's take a moment to thank NatureBox for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. You know how it goes. You're at work. You're too busy to think about lunch because you're, you know, you're getting stuff done. Then all of a sudden you have a meeting at 3 p.m. You're totally out of steam. And then you're just going to eat whatever junk is laying around because you're hungry, right? Don't do that. You want to look and feel great with good food that's good for you. So head over to naturebox.com slash twit. This is the place to snack smarter. You can click on the continue button and then choose between three subscription options. Then you just go ahead and place your order based on what looks good. When you're a member, you can select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box and filter by a variety of dietary needs like vegan or, or gluten conscious or, or nut free. I happen to have a sweet tooth, so I gravitate towards the sweet stuff, but you can also filter by savory or spicy. It just kind of depends on what kind of snacks you like. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. You know what's good about the blueberry figgy bars I had as a snack earlier today? Everything. They're so good. Zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial. You can do a three, six, or 12-month subscription for the special someone in your life or, or just a friend or a, co a coworker who should be snacking smarter. Forget the vending machine. Get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like the sourdough cheddar pretzels I had right before the show started. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me now is Reed Albergati, tech reporter over at the Wall Street Journal. Hey, Reed. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming back on the show. And I, lo I love your background. Are you back there anywhere? I am not back here. These are these are actually Wall Street Journal dot drawings that you might be you might have seen in our print newspaper that have actually appeared in the paper. My head cut, as we call them here, has not appeared, but it's a cool wall anyway. I'll let you look it, at it. It's a very cool wall, and and if anyone is interested in yours, it is your Twitter avatar. So you know it does exist. It is. Yeah, you can see mine on on Twitter <laughs> right, and right. Facebook. <laughs> All right. Well, as promised, let's talk about Facebook's new app, Slingshot. People are calling this its, its, its I guess, next effort. If you considered Facebook poke the first effort at being a Snapchat killer, this is being compared to Snapchat, but it's, it's a little different, isn't it? Oh, it's really different. I actually have it right here. I was playing around with it. <laughs> um, you can see that I've drawn on myself. Um, yes. That are set here. So if I want to send this to someone, I can, I can pick these these people that are in my Facebook address book. Yeah. Um, whoops, there's a little delay there. So, um, you know, there aren't there aren't that many people who have signed up for this. I don't know if that's a bad sign, or at least there aren't many people of my Facebook friends who have signed up. Um, I sent one of these to some people who work at Facebook. Um, that's mostly who signed up, and they haven't responded. And that could be because in order to see my little video message that I sent them, they need to send me something to actually share something of theirs with me. And this is this is the latest attempt by Facebook to try to get users to share more. Um, they've done this with with a lot of their their new app offerings, for instance, one that uses the microphone on your phone to see to be able to tell what you're watching on TV or listening to. Um, you know, they're they're looking for ways to get more content to to be funneled onto their platform. Well, and so, I think this is the latest attempt. We're playing around with Slingshot around the office, and 
you know, it, it's it's the scheme that never ends, right? It, it forces someone to always kind of have the last word, but then in order for the other person to see that, then they've got it. It's, I can see where it is designed to increase engagement because you never really ha want to have that one message sent by a friend that you can't see, but it is awkward, I think, for anybody who understands that ephemeral messaging doesn't always have to be a back and forth conversation. That's totally true. Um, look, I've, I've tried using Snapchat and I find on Snapchat, you get these really weird random messages. Um, and I've sent some into the, into the ether. And yeah, I mean, I, if I shared something with someone just to see the message and it turned out to be some nonsense, I might feel kind of silly. I think that this, this idea by Facebook to force you to share something though, I mean, it's, it's kind of brilliant, but I just, I ha I'm, I'll be really interested to see if people will actually take the time to use this. Um, so time will tell. I mean, look, Facebook has, has worked on um, other Snapchat copycats like Poke, um, other apps like Paper, and, and these, these things have sort of fallen flat. Um, it's Facebook Messenger is doing okay, but they're really making an effort to get people to use it. If you want to respond to a message within Facebook on your mobile phone, you literally are forced to download the separate Messenger app. And every time you send a message, you get this, this prompt by Facebook, you know, do you want to send a request for this person to download the messenger app. So they are trying, they're pulling out all the stops to get people to use this thing. And, you know, this is the latest attempt. And, and I, I, I have my doubts. I mean, just the, the track record is not great so far. Well, you, you mentioned Facebook messenger and obviously Facebook wants very much for messenger to kind of be its own thing, but it was part of the Facebook experience and is now somewhat being spun off into just its own standalone experience. Well, this, I could say the same thing about Slingshot, but like you mentioned, when you looked for people on Facebook earlier, you were find, finding a few people who worked at the company, but nobody else. I found zero people, which isn't yeah. even right because one of the people I was looking for was sitting right next to me and he was on the service. So the app seems a little buggy. We know that it briefly showed up in the app store last week, got pulled by the company, who basically admitted that they had an app that they weren't ready to, to push. Does it seem half-baked still? Yeah, I just don't, I don't really see my, you know, friend group really getting into this app. Um, but that doesn't mean it won't be hugely successful. I mean, who knows? But um, the other thing to, to keep in mind is that it prompts you to allow the app access to your address book. And, you know, that's another reason if Facebook can just get a lot of people to download this and send their address book details to Facebook, it's a pretty good data play. Um, so that's, that's one aspect. Um, the other thing is this is, this is a six month project, whereas paper, you know, the app that's sort of a, a flipboard, um, copycat, a news aggregator was a two year project. And it could mean that Facebook is speeding up the process and it's what it's called. It's creative labs, program. And, and creative labs just means if you come up with an idea, Facebook will put together a group and let you work on that idea and develop the app. And that's how this one, this one started. So I think we can expect to see lots and lots of these apps rolled out in the near future. Six months from now, are we all going to be using Slingshot? <laughs> well, that's the question. I'm, I'm skeptical at this point. I, I just don't know if people are really going to want to have to, you know, create their own content just to see some, some message from their friend. But, but who knows if it's, if they're just dying to see what their friend, you know, might've said in their little selfie video shot, then maybe. Reed Albergati is a tech reporter over at wall street journal and becoming a regular here on tech news tonight. Reed, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. It's always fun. Always fun. See you next time. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> let's talk about some price drops. Microsoft Surface Pro 3 is shipping later this month, and the company has lowered the prices on its second-gen Intel-based Surface Pro 2 tablets in preparation, some models anyway. Microsoft cut prices on the 64-gigabyte Core i5-based Surface Pro 2. It's now $799 instead of $899. The highest-end 512-gigabyte model is now $1,599. It was originally $1,799. Microsoft cut Surface Pro to prices in the UK back in May, so...
not totally unexpected to make way for, for the new guard. Uh, though during the company's announcement of the Surface Pro 3 on May 20th, back in New York City, Surface Chief Panos Pene said that Microsoft will gradually phase out its Surface Pro 2 devices, but the company had no current plans to phase out its ARM-based Surface 2 devices. So if you're looking for a place to spend your money, you've got some more options. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.